Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you from start to finish how to print your own stickers at home. Hi, I'm Diana, the artist behind my McDoodles. Welcome to my channel. Here are the supplies I use when printing my own stickers. I like the Royal Elements brand of sticker vinyl. I've had a lot of positive experience with this and a lot of success, and these are really durable and hold up well, and they print really vibrant on this vinyl. So I really like this brand, and I can recommend it um, based on my own experience with it. The printer I use is a Canon PIXMA IX6820. I really like this printer. I bought it for printing photos, but it works really well for stickers as well, and it really prints out nice and vibrantly, so I really like it for printing my own products at home. The sticker machine I use is the Cricut Explorer Air 2. You can get this machine directly on the Cricut website or from other sellers such as Amazon. I'll put links in the description of the video for this as well, and sometimes you can look around and get a good deal on these machines. This one kind of balances a more reasonable price point along with a whole lot of different functions. So that model worked particularly well for me and it ended up paying for itself just by the fact that I could print and sell stickers using this machine. So I would encourage you to do a little research into which model would work best for your um, crafts and the products and things that you would like to create on it because there are a lot of different models now. Um, but I really like the Explorer Air too. I'll put a link in the description of the video where you can buy all of these supplies. I create most of my digital artwork in the app called Procreate. If you use other drawing apps, it would work in a similar way, um, but the specific details of how to create like your outlines and things like that will be um, shown in Procreate. I have this image of this tea kettle that I would like to create a die cut sticker with. This tutorial was only for die cut stickers. Kiss cut stickers will be covered in a separate tutorial because there's a slightly different method that I use for those. Um, but today we'll be doing just like single image die cut stickers. So I'm going to make one from this tea kettle. And you can see it's kind of like an intricate shape. If I were to cut it out with scissors, it has like a lot of curves and stuff like that, which isn't the easiest to cut out with scissors. If you have a more simple shape, like these rainbows or something, you can totally just cut these out with scissors. Um, but if you have a more intricate shape like this earth um, with this border, then it's best to use a um, like a machine to cut it or get it professionally printed because it's really difficult to cut out shapes like that smoothly with scissors. So I'll be creating a sticker from this tea kettle and I'll show you how I do my outlines for it. This is artwork that is already created that I exported as a PNG and then you, I can import it into my document here to create my stickers. The size of this canvas is 1080 by 1080 pixels. Um, you can make whatever size you wish. Just make it 300 dots per inch to make sure the resolution is nice and crisp. Um, this is about a uh, little, it's like four inches or so, I think, uh, which is plenty big for the stickers that I'm creating. I'll probably make this sticker like two and a half inches or so, um, but it kind of just depends on your preferences. Just make sure whatever size canvas you make, um, make it 300 dots per inch. And if you're importing images in, you don't want your canvas to be like way larger than your image. You don't want to have to resize your image in Procreate. It'll get blurry if you make it larger. You can always make them smaller without losing quality, but if you try to enlarge it, it's um, going to become like all pixelated and blurry. So you don't want to create a sticker that's bigger than your original image. If you're cutting this by hand, this entire stuff is unnecessary. So you don't need to draw a border. You can just keep your illustrations that you had saved previously as PNG files. Um, you can just use those and I'll show you how I work with those in a minute. So I have my transparent um, background PNG imported into this document here. And then I'll just show you how I outline it. Now there's a couple different ways you can do it. First of all, I like to use this monoline pen, and that comes free with the Procreate app in the calligraphy section of the library. And I'm going to use white to outline it. And you can turn this up pretty large. 
it's right there. And then you simply like draw around the border of your sticker and drop your color in. So this method is pretty simple. Um, you literally just draw a shape that goes around your uh, illustration here and then you can either color drop or just like color it in. I used a really big brush so I didn't have to do much besides just like trace around. Um, and I just wanted to point out if you have any jittery areas like, I don't know if you can see, but like such as that or down here, it's like not like perfectly smooth. It's a little bit like shaky. Your machine's gonna cut out um, like shaky like that. So what you might want to do is streamline your brush pretty heavily. So if you tap on the brush, you can adjust the settings over here. And if you go to um, stabilization, you can adjust the streamline. And I would crank it up pretty high so that your lines become nice and smooth. If it's down too low, it's going to pick up like every little jitter in your hand. And um, it, it makes it harder to draw like a nice smooth line. Like it'll pick up little jitters. So you can streamline it. Mine was at like 70 something and then the stabilization you can adjust as well and that just makes it so like when you're dragging it you can see it kind of like smooths everything out and you can kind of play around with it to see what's comfortable for you. Um, for drawing I would never have it this high but for tracing a border you want it to be like super smooth and the line to be really nice so you can have this um, turned up a little bit higher than normal. The only other thing I should mention, which I think is fairly obvious, is you make a layer underneath of your illustration, and then that's where you're going to be drawing your white um, like border for your machine to cut on. And I will leave a little bit of leeway. Like this is pretty close, and the uh, when you're if you're using a Cricut machine, it doesn't always read the um, the guidelines perfectly. So it could be a little bit off, like it might not be perfectly calibrated. So your machine might cut down here into your image a little bit if this border is too close. So I would make it, um, you know, like give it some, some like lead uh, here in your outline and then that way it won't um, cut into your design and of course you don't have to have like gaps like this you could just completely fill it in white but I think it's a little more interesting when the stickers have like little cutouts like that rather than just like a solid you know like background so once you have a border that you like you can export this as a PNG now let's make an outline for this pink sweater I'm going to use the other method I mentioned um, to make the outline for this one. So we know we could trace around it with the white monoline brush in a layer below this image and drop the color in and that's one way you can make your border. Well here's another way. So duplicate your image and alpha lock it by either tapping on it and pressing alpha lock or taking two fingers and swiping to the right and then click on it again and press fill layer it's going to fill it completely white just within the borders of your illustration. Now I'm going to put that below the pink sweater and then turn off the alpha lock and then go up here to the adjustments menu and choose Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur it a little bit like 5% and then um, you can see it's spilling out a little bit here. I'm going to go to the selection tool and choose automatic and then tap outside of the um, blurred area and you can adjust your threshold a little bit until it looks like the border that you are wishing for like if you want it to be cut up into the sleeves a little more you can just keep going until it has the shape that you like um, I want to leave a little leeway from my Cricut machine so I'm just going to make it a little bit less um, intricate and something like that looks good. You can see the entire blue area is selected, but you want it to be, um, be like within the sweater. So I'm going to press invert. And then you can see that's the area that's selected. And then you go to the layers menu here while you still have this selected. Press the plus sign to make a new layer and then you can either take this paint and just drop it straight into that selected area or you could press fill layer right here and it'll do the exact same thing. 
So now that is my sticker border and that's another way you could do it for more like detailed designs. So if you don't want to have to trace like in and out of all these like nooks and crannies, then you can do it that way and it makes it a little easier. Just be careful that you leave enough space um, for your machine. So this might even be a little bit tight. So I might just repeat the whole process and do it again. Um, this time I can just do it directly with that white layer um, and just blur that out a little bit. I like to duplicate it just in case I don't like the end result then I'm not like stuck with it. So I'm going to blur it about 4%, grab the selection tool on automatic, tap out here, and it makes another border as you can see. And then I invert it and make a new layer and just drop the color into that selected area. And that is a nice thick border that I think will work well for the Cricut machine. So I'll go ahead and export this as a PNG with a transparent background so that I can upload it into Cricut Design Space. If you plan to print and cut out your stickers by hand, you do not need to make those white borders like we were making for the Cricut machine. So you can just open a new canvas that is the size of the sticker paper that you'll be printing on. Mine is eight and a half by 11, the US letter size. So that's the size canvas I've made. It's also at 300 dots per inch to make sure it doesn't reduce the quality or anything of my images. And I'll just go ahead and import my stickers into this document and show you how I lay them out. So I just go to the actions menu, press add, and then I add my photos one by one since I exported my stickers as uh, PNG files onto my iPad. It saved it into my camera roll. So I'll just go through and insert a photo for each one. And you can see it imports quite little um, because this is a full size letter sheet. If you are not sure how big that is, go to canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and then on the 2D grid, you can um, adjust the grid size. So you can tap here where it said 104 pixels. I can go to inches since that's what I'm using here in the US and click one. And then I know each grid uh, box is one inch square. And then I can kind of measure my stickers that way and figure out how they're going to be laid out on the page. So I can see that this sticker is about like an inch and a half square. And then I'll just go through one by one and add in my stickers uh, just one time and then I'll duplicate them within this app. I've imported my stickers one by one here within to this document and they do have white borders because I made these so that they could be printed on or cut out on the Cricut. Um, but you do not have to add the white borders if you're just going to print and cut by hand. So then I lay them all out on the page and the good thing about cutting them with scissors is you can squish like tons and tons of stickers in here. Um, whereas on the Cricut, you have a limited size canvas on which to work and it leaves you with like a pretty wide border all around your sticker page where there's just wasted material. So if you can cut by hand with scissors, that's preferable as far as like the cost effectiveness um, part of it because you won't waste as much sticker vinyl. So I prefer to do that when I can, if it's a shape that I can cut nicely and smoothly and it still looks professional because I can get more stickers out of a sheet of paper than if I run it through my Cricut. And of course it's like quicker um, to just run it through your Cricut as far as like the cutting process, but then you have to make all these borders. So you kind of just like weigh it against that and see what works for you. Depends on the design as well and how intricate it is. So I would just lay these out on the page and just like squish as many in as possible so I can print a ton of stickers. The only thing to um, keep in mind is uh, that you don't want to have it too close to the margins. So when my printer um, prints things out, sometimes it'll be like a tiny bit skewed to like the left or, or something like that. You don't want it to like cut anything off. So leave a reasonable margin around the borders um, when you're laying them out. And also another thing to note is to always duplicate from your original because as you duplicate these, they lose quality. So if you just keep duplicating and duplicating from 
um, the copied images over and over again, it's gonna your last sticker is gonna be like more blurry than your first one. So try to duplicate from your original whenever possible. If it's a shape that's like leaving wasted space, I also like to kind of like flip them up and down and like um, any way I can to save sticker paper and to save space. Um, so if they interlock better this way, then I'll flip them and print some of them upside down and um, some of them right side up, just however I can to get to get them to all fit in the page um, pretty well. I'm kind of cheap, so I don't, I don't like to like waste any material or any space on like a sheet of sticker paper. I want to maximize it um, because it's not the cheapest stuff to print on, and you want to make sure you get the most for your money. So I like to um, make sure I have everything like fully maximized. The other thing, don't turn your images. You can flip them and it seems like they are perfectly fine, like they don't lose quality. But if you twist them to fit it in the space better, like say you rotate that, when you release it, you'll see it becomes like a little bit blurry. So when you resize images, making them bigger, or when you rotate them, they become pixelated or a little bit blurry. So that will be another thing to be wary about. Now with this, it doesn't really matter. Like it still looks pretty good. Um, but if it was a design with lots of like little cute details, it will get a little blurry on you if you rotate it. So I would avoid rotating them if possible and just try to squish as many in as you can just by flipping them or um, just, you know, scooting them around the page just to use as much white space up as possible. Just wanted to show you guys a mistake I made here. So when I was flipping them, you can see I flipped this tea kettle um, and my words are backwards because if you flip it down, you have to also flip it horizontal. Um, it would have been like more obvious if it was something with words on it like this sweater. If you choose to flip it vertical, you also have to flip it horizontal so that it prints correctly and your words aren't backwards. So I didn't notice it. Sometimes I can't like think and talk at the same time. Uh, apparently my brain can't handle both. So sometimes when I'm on here uh, to show you stuff um, <clears throat> and I'm drawing at the same time, I don't realize I make a mistake like that. So I just wanted to point it out in case you have a design where it's not entirely obvious when it goes backwards. Like the only reason I noticed is because my signature was backwards. So just be aware of that. This is the page I'm going to use to print and cut by hand. You can see I like this looks pretty full. Like I've almost utilized every single negative space. There's a couple here and there. I could probably squish a few more in. Um, I like to fill in with like littler versions of some of the stickers too. And sometimes I keep those for myself or I'll sell it as like a mini version or give it away. Um, and I feel like I filled in the space pretty well here. There's not like a whole lot of wasted vinyl. Um, and you can see if this was set up for a cricket it would be an absolute nightmare like the white borders are touching like this would not work but it works just fine for a print and cut at home with scissors kind of deal because the white space doesn't matter as long as it's not overlapping with your design so this is the sheet i will print out and cut with scissors and now we'll, let's do it in cricut design space i've opened cricut design space and made a new canvas um so we'll set it up in here now, the machine has a limitation of how big um, of a canvas you can print on. So what I like to do is make a guide. So I will um, just set up one of these basic shapes. And you can see this alarm thing, warning sign. Um, so the image is, is too big. And it'll tell you the dimensions that you can um, print and cut on for your particular machine. Uh, mine happens to be 6.75 times 9.25 inches. Uh, so I think right now it thinks we're just like cutting out a shape. It doesn't realize we're going to print and cut. So that's why it's showing me this um, these dimensions. This is incorrect. So for print and cut on the Cricut machines, you can do 6 and 3 quarters by 9 and 2 quarters nine and one quarter inches. That's your canvas size. So I want to resize this square to kind of give me a guide of how big of an area I have to work with. If you click on your 
your shape. Um, then when you click at the edit menu, you can see you can adjust the dimensions here. So I'm going to unlock it because I don't want it to be a square anymore. And I'm going to make it um, 6.75 inches times 9.25. And then that alert should go away. And then I can import my images for print and cut here and then before I go ahead and like do uh, make my project I'll turn this layer off I don't want like a big black box behind it so I'll just turn it off with this eyeball thing here in the menu um, before I print so I have my canvas and now I want to import my images so you can upload and then I'm going to select it from my photo library if you already have the images uploaded into Cricut, you can just open uploaded images and add in all your stuff there. But I'm just going to pull them from my photo library. When you import them, it gives you some options. So you can like remove the background, which I don't want to do because I want that white border. Um, you can manually erase and crop and things like that. It'll also give you the option to smooth out your lines. It's pretty smooth. So I'm just going to press next and then um, you can name your image so you can find it easily and choose print and cut, not just cut because it will only cut like that shape. I want to print it first and then cut it. So I am going to save it like that. And then it lets me pick it from my uploaded images and insert it into my document. So I'll go ahead and arrange it on the page. Right now it's huge. That sticker is going to be five inches by three and a half, and that's just way too big. So I'll select it and then lock it and then resize it by dragging it here. Or you can just type in the dimensions you want your sticker to be. Like let's say you want it to be uh, two and a half wide. That's a pretty quick way and um, to make sure it's like accurate and it's pretty quick to resize it that way. So it'll now be two and a half by like one and three quarters. And then you can just duplicate that layer by pressing this plus sign here and it'll duplicate your sticker to put all over the page. So in this one I, I try to like squish them in the best they can too. So I'll arrange them in any kind of like interlocking pattern I can manage um, so that I can maximize this canvas because you can't get as many out of it when you use Cricut. So I just interlock them the best I can um, so that I can still cut on the lines properly and everything. Just get it as close as you can so that you can get a lot of stickers out of your canvas. And then I'll upload my other ones like the sweater and stuff and the um, tea kettle and just arrange them on the canvas like I just showed you. This is how I got them arranged on my Cricut canvas. So I tried to squeeze as many in as possible, but you can see it's significantly fewer than if I had just done print and like cut with scissors. So I have um, as many as I think I can fit. And now I'll turn off this um, guide for my canvas just by pressing on that layer and clicking the eyeball um, to hide that. And then if you just simply click make it, it will split out your stickers onto several different sheets. Now you can see now this is even more wasted space. Um, so I don't want to do that. It's going to use up two sheets of sticker vinyl when I know I can fit these on one. So what you'll need to do is select all of your layers and you can do it just by drawing um, a box around all of your layers or you can click over here but it's um, way faster just to select them in your canvas area and then you need to attach them. If you go to the actions menu click attach and now they're all going to act as one um, set I guess and you can see it's telling me it's still too big even though I was within the borders it's probably just like a smidge too um, wide or something because I know this sweater was really close to the edge of that canvas. So all you do is grab your attached like folder thingy and then you can just resize it slightly right here 
or you can look here in the edit menu you can see it's 6.8 and it only supports 6.75 so it's just like a tiny bit too big so you can just resize it by dragging that little arrow and getting it to a size that it will accept or you can just simply type in 6.75 and then it will resize it and you can see that warning has gone away so now it will print these and treat it as like one page. It knows to print it all on the same um, sheet of paper. So if you click make it, it all fits on this paper. So just make sure that you check that before you um, continue through the process so you don't waste material. I don't want any bleed. It puts like a grayish box around it, unless they've improved it. Maybe they have with some updates, but I just always click off this bleed because we already made our border um, and our bleed in Procreate with our white borders. So you can click that off and then um, you can choose from these options here for your print size and all of that. This all looks good to me. Um, and then you can just push print. If you're on your computer, it's better if you print using the system dialog, but if you're using the app, there's really no choice for that. So I just press print and it'll pop up to this and I'm going to print it on my sticker vinyl. This is my printout from my Canon PIXMA iX6820. You can see that it printed pretty like clearly and vibrant and everything. Um, so it is on glossy vinyl. So there's some steps you'll need to take to ensure your Cricut can read this black guideline. And that is covered in this video here. The biggest um, thing that you need to do is tape over the black guideline with some scotch tape and then it can read it more clearly and ensure that it cuts on your cut lines um, that you created with that white border. Crickets have light, standard, and strong grip mats. I'm going to use this light grip mat. It has like a little less tack so it's perfect for sticker vinyl where it won't be like so hard to peel back off of your mat. It'll come off um, more easily. You would not really want to use like a stronger um, even like a standard grip can really bend your stickers and stuff. So I taped over this black guy line with my scotch tape and that gives it a nice matte finish so that my Cricut can see the, um, the line. If you want more tips on using glossy vinyl, then please check that video I put in the cards. If your dial is set to custom, then you have a whole list of materials that you can choose from um, and you can use the search bar to look for um, different types of material depending what you are cutting and this might help you too depending on like the thickness of your vinyl or your sticker paper or whatever. Um, you can take a look through these settings. There's more available to you than just like the settings that are on your Cricut dial. When you're ready, you can load your mat and you can see the tools that are required for your um, particular project and it needs a fine point blade. It might be helpful to have some extra blades on hand because as your blade dulls, um, then it needs more and more pressure to cut through your material and it can create like kind of like jaggedy cuts and like kind of sometimes will like scrape at the material instead of cutting through and you'll have to use different um, cut settings um, to cut deeper within the material or press harder depending on the sharpness or the dullness of your blade. So it's kind of handy to have some extra blades on um, hand for when yours gets dull you can just switch it out and I'll put a link in the description of the video for the extra blades that I use. Um, and I just find it helpful to have some extra ones there. The trick I learned to clean your blade is to um, like poke it into foil. So I literally keep a ball of foil here in this like holder thing for my Cricut and I take out my blade and press down so that it is exposed and then just like poke it into this foil a few times um, to clean off like any extra residue from like my stickers and stuff on the tip of the blade before I cut my stickers. And that helps just keep it clean. It will not sharpen your blade, it only cleans it off. So it won't help you if you need a new blade and it's dull. But if it had, just has like sticker residue and it's like getting hung up, then it's really easy just to like crumble up this piece of aluminum foil and like poke it in there a bunch of times before you run your machine each time to clean it off.
Before you unload your mat, make sure that your blade has cut the whole way through your sticker. So just double check it. And if it has not cut the whole way through, then you want to go ahead and press the Cricut button again to send it through a second time rather than the unload button. And that will cut on the exact same cut lines that you already had um, it cut on the first time to make sure it goes the whole way through. So this sheet of stickers is a great example to show you um, some troubleshooting. So I don't know if you can see it. First of all, it did not cut the whole way through. So this was not a deep enough setting. This is great for like kiss cut stickers. If you're doing a sticker sheet, then this is good because you only wanted to cut through the sticker on the sheet and not the whole way through like the backing. Um, so that setting would be good for kiss cut stickers. So I usually make a note of what settings um, for each type of like each brand of sticker vinyl and for each type of sticker so that I know what to set my dial to. So for this to create um, die cut stickers, I probably need to set my dial to like cardstock or vinyl plus or something like that to make it cut more um, through the backing as well. And another problem is that these are cut through the image. So you can see it was not calibrated at all and it didn't read the cut lines properly. So this is probably because it's glossy vinyl and I missed a spot with the scotch tape um, like on the side here. It probably read an area that was still like really glossy and it couldn't pick up the cut line properly. And so all of the stickers are cut through the image and then like off to the side. So they're all crooked and stuff. So if you have this happen, it's probably because your machine did not read this guideline properly. And you can um, just double check like that you taped over the entire thing and also follow the other tips I provide in that other video um, that's all about like troubleshooting for glossy uh, vinyl. So these are a complete failure. Like I can't even um, sell these as kiss cut stickers because they look terrible. So sometimes this happens and this is another um, drawback to using a Cricut machine versus just cutting with scissors yourself because sometimes you get things like this happen and then it's a complete waste of your material. So just keep it in mind. It happens to everybody and it's sometimes you just have to mess around with the settings and stuff to get the desired outcome. Obviously, this is not the desired outcome. So I'm going to print it again and try again. So this is a problem with glossy sticker vinyl. I've never had this problem where it doesn't read the lines properly with matte sticker vinyl. Um, and you can see this is also a really like um, bright white material. It prints really nicely and it's also the Royal Elements brand, which I really like. Um, so a lot of times I would lean towards matte vinyl because I didn't have to tape over the guidelines and I didn't, knew it probably was not going to have that problem where it's not calibrating properly. So I'll put a link in the description to this vinyl as well in case you're interested in using matte vinyl and just like foregoing that whole process with like um, kind of like outsmarting your Cricut machine to make it cut properly and glossy. So this cut the whole way through and instead of peeling your vinyl up like this off of your mat, sometimes it's helpful to flip your mat over and peel it up from your vinyl. It works best if you curl your mat until the stickers kind of lift a little bit on their own and then just gently peel them up rather than trying to like forcefully pull them off of the mat because they'll curl. So that's just a little trick I've learned. Like if you roll your mat a little bit, then they will automatically start to lift. And then you can just gently kind of like pull to the side and it lifts them off really nicely. Or you can use a little spatula, but this works well for me. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. You can tag me at my McDoodles on Instagram so I can see yours. Let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe before you go. Here is another video that you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.